don't we all love storage? Storage as in SSDs, that kind of stuff. My issue is I use many, many different products. I have many PCs that I use as a daily driver. I have a desktop, I have a laptop. I'm always messing around with stuff. And a lot of the time I do my video editing on storage. What is cool is fast storage and reliably cool storage. This is from Van Gree. They sent this over to me, asked me if I wanted to review it. It's a Thunderbolt 5 or USB 4, 80 gigabit per second NVMe enclosure. What does that mean? So that means it's going to be fast, fast, fast. Now I have USB 4 type enclosures here. I have a Thunderbolt 4 type desktop. That'll give you 40 gigabit per second. However, now we are seeing more and more and more devices coming out with Thunderbolt 5 or 80 gigabit per second USB-C. What am I talking about here? Well, there's a Mac mini back there this here, this here, this here, this here. This is 80 gigabit per second. 40 gigabit per second is more common. So let's say we're getting a 40 gigabit per second enclosure. That's quick, that's great, that's fantastic. You can get something like this here, right? This is a Gen 4 SSD NVMe. This thing, in theory, inside of your computer will get around 7,000 megabytes a second. 7,000 megabytes a second, that's quick very quick inside of a computer. When you put it in a traditional enclosure, hook it into enclosure, hook it up to the outside of your computer, you're not gonna get 7,000, uh, especially older ones. Even Thunderbolt 4, you're gonna get like half of that. And then if you go down to other, you know, speed, USB 3.1.2, whatever, blah, 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 you might get as slow as 1,000 or even 500 megabytes a second. So huge drop in raw performance. We are seeing devices come out more and more. Uh, we're kind of just at the advent where we're now moving into premium devices coming out with Thunderbolt 5. This one here is a brand new Dell XPS. Uh, I guess they call it a Dell Premium, Dell Ultra, Dell Max, Ultra Max, whatever. The name is dumb. Uh, it's a very nice laptop, but it has Thunderbolt 5. Mac M4, as long as you get an M4 chip, you get Thunderbolt 5 on the mini or on the laptop, the MacBook. And that's just gonna give you more speeds. This is the device here. Uh, it's a nice metal design here. Not metal, all metal, 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 very premium. I like that. Inside, we do have your controllers here. The flip side of the board is where the fan is. Uh, the fan is actually, some people may think, you know, why is the fan not running over the NVMe? Because we put the NVMe in this side, right? And there's a fan in here. And you think, say to yourself, well, the fan isn't running over the NVMe. There's no air blowing over the NVMe. So how does that work? That's not how these fans work. I've been doing a lot of enclosure reviews and I've found that they the fans do work very well. What they're actually doing is they're cooling the metal. The metal itself works as a heat sink. It takes heat off of the NVMe. In this case, it'll take it off into the lid. Heat will come off the NVMe, go into this lid here. And then what happens is this metal thing heats up. This whole metal thing heats up. It's a passive heat sink. So it's passive, it's touching that, it takes the heat off. By then evaporate, evacuating the heat out of this device with the fan, you cool the metal down. The metal can then do that. So you don't have to worry about blowing air over the NVMe because you're blowing air over the whole damn giant metal heat sink. Okay, so I'm coming in here, it's a brand new drive. In this case, I've just made it, it's brand new, it's actually not. Come in here, you go initialize disk. If you have an NVMe that's already been initialized, it'll just pop up, it'll go boom, it'll just pop up here in your file explorer. If you don't, then you just go like that, and then you go new. So I'll put like this, I'll just name it, I'm gonna make it XFAT just for I can test it on my Mac over there later. Uh, TB5 test, like that. So check the speeds here. We can check the temperatures as well. See if it gets hot and see how fast it is. It's not a very complicated test, to be honest. I just want it to work, to be honest. There, you, Look at that. So that's Thunderbolt 5 USB 80 gigabit speeds. So it's fast. This NVMe, this NVMe inside here is it sits around 7,000 anyways. So it's getting very close to the peak of the drive, meaning I paid money for this here. I'm actually getting it. Normally, I used to recommend people, I'm like, don't get yourself a, a USB uh, Gen 4, don't get your NV an NVMe Gen 4 drive, you know, with this kind of speeds, because not, you're not going to get it when you're using an enclosure. USB 4, Thunderbolt 4 enclosures, you can't get that fast. They're half the speed. And so when you use the device, you're only getting half of what you pay for. So I'm like, just screw it. Get yourself a previous generation, you know, like a six, seven year old NVMe uh, model. It'll be fine because you, you can't even get these speeds. But now that we're moving into, finally, we're moving into fast Thunderbolt 5 appearing on laptops and USB 80 gigabit as well. 
like this here, we're seeing double the speed. Okay, now we'll turn the fan on, I'm just gonna hold it. So it was getting, started to finally get warm after running it with no fan for some time. Uh, I ran the test twice, I guess it would have been, technically. And uh, let that thing go. Now the fan's going. There, It's so much quieter than the stupid effing laptop. Um, I am going to test this enclosure on a USB 4 capable device just to show the difference there. Um, and we'll see how quiet it is. But right now the temperatures are becoming more static. So what it's going to do now is going to pull air in probably from here, blow it up there. And it will cool down the exterior. See, it's already coming down. It'll cool down the exterior of the metal enclosure here, which will then wick heat away from the drive, right? We can even run that again. Now, these Gen 4 drives can get hot. They get hotter the faster they go. So when you put a Gen 4 drive in a fast enclosure like this, yes, they will get hot. So you need to have that fan that's pushing air. And I can feel the heat coming out of there, uh, even though I'm on my like fourth run here of this test. Right, so that's going to help a lot. Now it's it is they're balancing it between being a super annoying fan and being a fan that is you know, keeping the thing cool. Okay, so now what I now what I want to do actually click that. Now what I want to do is I want to show you this drive here in a typical uh, 10 gigabit enclosure. I always say things like, oh, 80 gigabit per second, Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 5, 40 gigabit per second, 10 gigabit per second, and I know that some people are like, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Too many numbers, and I'm just saying them. This is a 10 gigabit enclosure. This one that I'm reviewing today is an 80 gigabit enclosure. So it should be massively faster, seven-ish times faster. So you go on Amazon, you go on wherever, you pick up one of these, you know, they're 25, 30 bucks, and they'll get the job done for basic stuff. Like you'll see here, you know, on a 10 gigabit enclosure like this, we'll get okay transfers. We should get around a thousand, yeah, thousand megabytes a second. Now, this NVMe in here is an extremely expensive Western Digital SN 850p. I'm leaving 7.5 times what the performance can do on the table. That's giving me a thousand megabytes a second. This drive can do 7.5 thousand megabytes a second inside the PC. So it works, but this is way below what this drive is rated for. When you're getting one of these cheap enclosures, I mean, they're good for just quickly popping stuff in and out, I guess. Uh, more for, you know, if you just got basics, to throw some pictures on a thing, slow enclosure, it doesn't really matter, right? Okay, test two. This is a mini PC with, in theory, it has USB 4 capabilities. If not, I have another one behind me. Um, but I swapped the CPU on this thing so that I could get Thunderbolt 4 speeds here. And this is where these things become more useful. Um, like laptops, like they're good for stuff like desktops. If I have a big desktop setup, sure, they are good to move data around between especially, but they're more beneficial for things like laptops like this, because we have limited storage. Like this is a laptop that has two NVMEs inside. But these days, the average laptop does not have two NVMEs inside. They have one, sometimes not even a full size one. So that can be super annoying. Here, you know, we can use this enclosure with a laptop like this, get much more speed. It's still a disk mark. And we can also use it with stuff like mini PCs. I'm in my mini PC meta. I've been there for about almost a year now. I just love the benefits of mini PCs just being small, portable, and, you know, just clean setup. The problem is you don't get a lot of storage. Okay, so here's that there. I don't need to you know, make this a complicated video. Uh, I am hoping that this runs at USB 4 speeds because my lap, because my mini PC should support that. And I just want to show you what happens if you run it on a Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 port instead of a Thunderbolt 5. So here it is. This is where it's really going to be quite beneficial. This device here is so fast at Thunderbolt uh, five speeds, USB 80 gigabit speeds, there is nothing faster on the market, at least the mainstream market. So what's gonna happen here with this is this thing is gonna be so fast that if you have a Thunderbolt five equipped laptop, Thunderbolt five equipped mini or 80 gigabit per second equipped, it will give you the full speed. If you have something slower, this is USB four, Thunderbolt four, it's not like it's not gonna work. It'll just max out what that device is capable of doing. In this case, it's capable of still being pretty quick, 3800. So it's not like, you know, you buy this and you're like, but I don't have a Thunderbolt five capable device right now, or I don't have two of them, you know, I have one. It's fine because it's gonna be future proof, right? We're moving to the point where all of the mini PCs, all the desktops, all the laptops, Macs, et cetera, that are gonna come out in the future are just gonna be more and more and more likely to have Thunderbolt four, uh, Thunderbolt 5 and USB 80 gigabit per second speeds. So you can use it now. Like you don't have to say, well, I'll get it when I get, you know, my my Mac 
with that speed or when I get my main PC or my desktop with that speed or my laptop, you can get it now and it will still give you the speeds that you want. So it's fantastic. It runs exactly as I had hoped it did. Um, sometimes I do worry about backwards compatibility because some enclosures that I have tested, not all of them, I don't want to give names, but I have tested enclosures and in my testing, when I went back and used it with a older interface like Thunderbolt, you know, Thunderbolt 4 or something like that, uh, the device didn't work at its proper speed anymore. And we're not having that issue here. This one is running at the proper speed as it advertised. It has a fan that keeps it cooler, even with those really, really fast speeds. That's important on Thunderbolt 5, obviously, USB 5, uh, because it's fast. So you're going to need those uh, cooling mechanisms and it runs perfectly. So it's a great little device. I actually like it quite a bit. So very, very, very well done.